Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and in this video, we're gonna see how much it takes to just have a user input in the Golang. Now surely there are shorter ways, but I'm gonna introduce you to some of these errors and to learn more about these errors, we have to talk more about FMT or also known as FMT. Now I cannot talk much in detail about FMT because we don't know yet about conditional rendering, fancy name for just if and else. So let me show you a brief idea about how to take input, input from the user and what actually goes wrong when you take input from the user. So I have commented out my rest of the stuff like in the variable one everything is commented because we want to again redeclare a main here. So we're gonna simply say hey I got a package main here and we declare all of our import statement here. So I'm gonna use a special syntax here and I'm gonna say hey I want FMT. Now the reason for this syntax is because there are a couple of more stuff that we are going to require and I'm going to tell you the reason for that as well. So we're going to declare a main function and its definition comes here. Okay, now comes up the interesting stuff. Now the most easy way uh, which actually introduce you to a lot of error of taking input from the user is this one. So I'm going to call this one as simply my string and it's gonna be of data type string. There we go, no big deal, we have seen this so many times. And if you'll dig a little bit deep into documentation, you'll see that FMT has got this uh, scanf feature which we can use, scan ln, scanf, bunch of others as well. And what we can do is we can pass on a reference of this uh, variable and the way how we pass on a reference of any variable is by using ampersand sign. So I'm gonna simply say, hey, that's my reference to my string. So whatever variables you are scanning from the input, just store it in my variable my string. And then we can simply go ahead and print uh, this variable. So I'm gonna simply say my string. No big deal, this is the most basic one, but it actually introduces you to a lot of errors. So if I just run, go run and the program file name, it waits for taking my input. If I enter my name, uh, that's it, that's pretty much it does. But the problem actually gets started, let's just say this variable was declared to get my full name and I run this program and I enter my full name there. Now there we go, the problem comes. So if I hit enter, it says, hey, what you're talking about? I don't know what this command is and a whole bunch of things goes wrong. And things actually gets a little bit tricky once you start entering some numbers as well. It's gonna just throw the numbers, but if you want to take a list like that and you hit enter, it's again gonna go crazy. So yes, this uh, takes a bit of the thing. And if you are just taking a simple input from the user, just a name like what's your favorite color, it can work, but that's not why we are learning Golang here. We want to understand more about the things. So I'm gonna leave this as a comment so that you can see these in the exercise files if you are downloading them. Link is in the description. Now, bringing up here, apart from FUMT, we are going to have a couple of more packages here. So the first package, which is actually the package to take input from the user is buff.io. Through the buff.io, we can create a reader object that can read from the standard input. Uh, but in order to mention what is the standard input, we have to have a package named as OS. Now, we want to build a small miniature project in the upcoming videos, probably two or three videos after that. So for that, we definitely are going to take input from the user about what is rating and stuff. So we need to take input from the user in the number format as well. So for that, we are going to learn about what is this, stand, uh, this string converter that we are going to use. And finally, the one that we are gonna use is strings. Make sure you put an S there. Okay, now make sure you just uh, keep an eye on all of them because as soon as I save this, uh, Go actually automatically gets rid of that. So that's why I'm mentioning them up here. Notice here, when I just hit my control S, all of them are gone. There we go. So uh, again, uh, let's not do that. Command Z, have them. Now let's go ahead and understand things here. Now the next thing that we are going to understand is about the fumped errors. Now fumped actually can give you a couple of errors that you need to understand why they are throwing up and the reason for that. I cannot talk much in detail because we don't know about if and else yet. So let's just say, uh, let's go ahead and get a string with my name or my name as a variable which is a string and I'm gonna hold my name in it, so there we go. Okay, we have seen this many times, nothing fancy here. Now, we have also seen that we can print it. So I, had, I can go ahead and say, hey, print the name. Save that, and if I run this uh, again, it just prints my name, nothing fancy. 
But let's just say this entire line gives me a, a return of my name. So I want to store that into a variable for some weird reason. So uh, let's just say I go ahead and say, hey, this is going to store uh, this up here. I can do that directly. No need to infer that or anything like that. And then I can simply go ahead and print this. Now let's get introduction to the very first error that you're gonna see a number of times. And I hope you remember the word that when I said that if there are variables in Golang, you have to use them, otherwise it's gonna give us an error. So if I run this, it gives me, hey, there was just one variable, but fmt.println returns two value. So yes, and what are these values, how they work on, how we can do a lot of stuff with that, that's gonna come up later on. Right now I can just introduce another variable. In case you are too much curious, I can just go ahead and print that variable as well. So I'm using it and I can run this program again. So it gives a seven and nil. What that is, we definitely are going to discuss that, but right, not right now. Now, I don't want to use this B, I just want to have a, a, but if I save this, it's gonna give me an error that, hey, why are you not using this B? You have declared it. So in order to get rid of that, we many times just use an underscore. That means, yes, I am aware that there is something, but I don't want to use it. In that case, you can actually go ahead and use that. So there we go, no problem there. It's definitely gonna print out this seven as well, but we'll talk about that later on right now. Just the whole part is, we got the underscore in these kinds of special errors. Okay, now the whole thing is all clear up to you. Let's get rid of that as well, so comment that out. Now let's go ahead and take advantage of this buff.io. So first and foremost, how you proceed with that, buff.io gives you an access of a reader. So we call this usually as a reader, but it's just a variable name however you want to go. And I want to infer a value from buff IO. And if you put a dot here, it's gonna give you a whole lot of things that I have got a whole bunch of things that you can use. And I simply want to use this new reader. It has a lot of others as well. And new in the new reader, you have to mention from where you are going to read these values. So these values are gonna come from os.stdin, uh, standard input. Okay. So this reader is reading the value, but obviously I want to store uh, these values in some variable, but I also want to give user a message. So I'm gonna simply give a user message uh, that simply uh, enter your full name. And I'm gonna just go like that. I don't want to use print ln. I just want to use the print message here. And after that, I want to store that into a string. So I'm gonna call this as uh, my name. Yeah, my name is fine. And then we are going to go ahead like that and we are going to use this reader. And reader can give an option of reading uh, in a variety of manner. Just hit a dot and you're gonna see that uh, it gives an access. Why reader is not giving me that? I don't know. It usually suggests you the stuff. So there is a read string method. There are a couple of other method as well in this uh, read uh, in this reader. But I just want to use a read string as of now. And I want to mention that just after slash n, I just want to like get away. I don't want to take any value after that. So just use a slash n here. I think now, if I save this, this is gonna give me this more values. So yeah, now the FMT and buff IO and OS is here. I think now I can do it. If I can just go ahead and remove that and put a dot, there we go. We have got a lot of read values. So we got a read line, a read string, a read bytes, a whole bunch of others as well. So read string, making that again, uh, just like that, slash n, slash n. Okay, now obviously I want to print that out as well. So we're gonna go ahead and simply print uh, my name. Okay, uh, that is interesting. So this is how actually we take input from the user. So let's just save this and try to run this one more time. Let's go ahead and do that. And it says, hey, again, one variable, but reader string returns two value. And now you know how to resolve this error. So there we go. You didn't got off guarded here. You know, ah, I know how to handle these values in the my name. This reader is giving me more than one value. And that's exactly why we talked so much about this. Okay, and we can just put a comma and there we go. We know how to uh, deal up with this now. Let's go ahead and run this one more time and it says enter your full name and now hopefully I'm able to enter my full name separated by space, voila, it works. Okay, uh, one more stuff, one more stuff because our project actually needs that. 
So I'm gonna comment this one again, and I'm gonna move on to another stuff. So this time I want to take rating from the user. So again, I have to define a reader. Reader is gonna come from this buff io dot read. And again, we don't have anything specific to just uh, new reader and stuff. If you'll just say, see this new, we have got new reader writer. There is no special things uh, for reading the integer type values or numbers in a in a common way. So I'm gonna just have this new reader. Uh, there we go again from where you're gonna take input, just standard, standard input. There we go. Now I want to create a new way first and foremost, a user message forgot that almost. So FMT dot print and enter your rating. Okay, if I can write that, come on. Okay. Uh, so user is going to give us a rating. It's going to give us the rating in the number format. Okay, no big deal. We can store that. And I'm going to call this one as my rating. And my rating is going to come up from here, just like what we did above. So reader dot, and again, now this time we are reading this. So we are just reading the read string. So let's go ahead and use this one again, read string. And I want to keep on reading till I hit uh, this slash n. No big deal. Again, we know that just above we saw an error. So obviously it's giving us two values. So I want to just avoid that just like that. And I want to print it. But this time while printing this my rating, my rating for some weird reason, I want to add two to it because it's a number we are taking input from the user. Uh, we should be able to do that. But since we are reading a string, it should be pretty obvious to you that in almost every programming language, when you take input from the user, it's usually in the string format. No exception here, it's string format. It's gonna give us an error, but I want to show you that. So let's go ahead and do that. It says, hey, type mismatch, blah, blah stuff. So we know what the problem is. So in order to resolve this problem, we need to introduce a one more package here, which is string converter. So we're gonna go ahead and add that. We have already added that, but sometimes. STRCONV. Okay, now what you can do is you can wrap this entire thing, uh, this reader thing, stuff like that, into this uh, STRCONV. So I'm going to just go ahead and cut that. I'm going to use STRCONV. It has a lot of methods that can convert input into a variety of format parse bool, parse float, parse int. Let's use the float. You can use the int as well. We are dealing up with the integer only. And now if I just go ahead and do this inside this, things should be good, but they are not going to be good. Okay, let me just save this. And I try to run this one again. It's going to give us an error that cannot use error value as type int in argument to str convert. Uh, it's a ridiculous error, which is absolutely hard to understand. Now what happens by default is whenever you give an input, you are hitting an enter so that value of enter is also being parsed and that cannot be converted into the parse float. So you are not giving just two or four as a rating. You are also giving more things there. So in order to avoid that problem, uh, we need another package here, which is going to be strings. Okay. Too much here. And again, we need to remove this one up here. So we're going to go ahead and simply we are going to uh, cut that. So it's going up along here. Actually, I should do that up here. So I'm going to hit a command Z a couple of times to reduce to make this things. Actually, I can just go ahead and simply say, I'm going to cut this one out, remove this one. I'm actually basically doing is I'm just creating a new variable. I'm calling it as my num rating. It's going to make things much more easier. Okay, string conversion parse float, and then I can go ahead and have my rating here to show you that what exactly the error is. Now, I'm not doing anything else. Instead of having things inside stuff like that, I'm just creating a new variable that's gonna show you the thing much more easier. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, we see the same errors here, my num rating, because it's not able to convert this into uh, the parse float. So what we have to do again is use another thing. So I'm going to just cut this out. And now I'm going to use strings. So I'm going to simply say strings and string has a lot of method. One of them is trim space. That's the one we want to use. And now inside that I can just place this variable my rating. 
And now, after trimming all the spaces and spatial character from this my rating, then you can actually use parse float to convert that string into float, and then you can add the values to it. I know, that's too much. Okay, let's try this again and see if we get any errors or this is actually working. And again, it says, hey, there's an error up here. So my rating, uh, my bad, I didn't discuss this. Actually, this trim space take one more parameter up here that uh, in what uh, values you want to create, like I want to have a 32-bit version of it or 64. So I have to mention a 64. That's totally on me. So my bad. Okay, let's go ahead and clean that up. And there we go. Uh, it says variable, but str convert pass float returns to value. Yeah, I know that. We have seen this error many times. Save that. And again, hit control. Too many errors. But this time it says... Okay, I know my num rating. This is the final one. So let's go ahead and do that. I know that's too much of the error that's going on. Let's hit enter and it says your rating. I can say four, two is gonna be added there. And finally it's six. So as I told you, there is too much going on. Again, uh, the last point in case you got confused, this is where we are actually converting the stuff. So yeah, that's up there. So as I told you, yes, there is a lot going on just to take user input. I'll keep all of these sections. Usually most of the blogs and articles you're gonna see are talking about this. And in this section, we talked about why this underscore is there and how we can get rid of some of the errors that we see commonly while taking input. Here we learned how we can take input that has got some spaces in that. And in this section, we learned about that how we can have input and convert that into uh, either a floating value or an integer value. And we have to use so much of the things. So as I told you, uh, there's too much going on just to take input from the user, but that's necessary for us for one of the project, mini scale project that we'll be building up very, very soon in the series. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'm gonna catch you up in the next video.